If fully convertible, the renminbi would become the third highest turnover currency in the world. HSBC Research believes that it will be fully convertible by 2017. Jean-Christophe Girard, Chief Investment Officer at HSBC Private Bank in Switzerland, joins us to discuss the rise of the Chinese currency. Jean-Christophe, good morning. Good morning. Jean-Christophe, first explain us the difference between the various versions of the Chinese currency. We have the CNY, the NTF, the RMB. It's all very confusing. Yeah, sure. It's very confusing. However, they have all something in common, is that they are all the currency of the people. They are all renminbis, i.e. the currencies of China. Now we have on one side the CNY, which is the currency of China for a very long time. It's linked to history of China. And this is what we call the domestic currency used in China, highly regulated by the People Bank of China. But on the other side, we saw the development of offshore currencies, offshore renminbis, like the CNH. The CNH is an offshore currency, meaning that you can trade the CNH from outside. And even you, you can invest in CNH like it would not be possible to invest in CNY. If it were convertible, the RMB would be the third currency in the world after the dollar and the euro. Can you give us some background? Sure. So uh, the, the volumes we trade today on the RMB, and I'm talking about the offshore RMB, the CNH, are still volumes linked to a very young currency. Because the CNH, the offshore RMB, is only two or three years old. So the volumes are in billions every day that we trade, but it's, it's nothing comparable to the USD or to the Euro, where we are talking about hundreds of billions every day. So volumes on the CNH are quite limited. But first, in two, three years, we saw these volumes uh, rising very fast. On two, this is nothing comparable to the situation it will be when the renminbi will be fully convertible. On us at HSBC, we think that the renminbi will be fully convertible by 2017. And at that moment, as you said in the introduction, the renminbi will be the third largest uh, currency traded in the world after the USD and after the Euro. It's a fantastic evolution in the FX markets. And the liquidity has substantially increased in the last two, three years. So what are really the fundamental assumptions for HSBC to announce that the renminbi will be fully convertible, if not really convertible, by 2017? Yeah, so we, we do think it will be fully convertible by 2017. As you said, we don't say that it will be freely convertible. So what are the reasons for China to move that way? Well, we can, we can cite a lot of different reasons. I, I would cite a few of them. The first one being, well, China is the second largest exporter in the world. We are talking about exports every year of about uh, two trillion dollars. On, uh, we would all be very surprised that China, the Chinese government, does not want to have its own currency to settle this trade. So that would be the first parameter. The second reason would be that China needs to develop its financial capital market in China. Why that? Because until now, the banks, these Chinese banks, have financed the Chinese economy, which is something that, ma that might fragilize some of these banks. And the government needs to switch from a bank finance economy to a capital market economy. To do so, they need to develop capital markets in China. To do so, they need a convertible currency just to attract foreign investors. So this is a good second reason. Then the third one is more like, why do they accelerate the move today? Because we, do think about, we are talking about 2017, which is very soon. And the reason for this is that uh, China used to be uh, quite, used to have a quite imbalanced economy due to its very strong export uh, uh, focus. Now that China is still a strong exporter, but ha has, has developed its middle class consumption, we don't have these imbalances in the Chinese economy. The current account in China is only 3%. The current account surplus is only 3% of the GDP which makes us think that it's time to accelerate the convertibility of the renminbi. 
Um, speaking about exporters, they're quite keen to actually uh, settle in Remimbi, aren't they? They even offer discounts for that. Yeah, absolutely. So two years ago, 0% uh, of the trade of China was settled in CNH. In 2012, it was 8.5%. We do think that in 2015, it will be 33%, one third of the whole Chinese trade. And when you ask to a Chinese exporter, do you prefer to settle in USD or in Chinese renminbi, they will tell you that they prefer to, 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 to build in Chinese renminbi offshore. They are even ready to propose a discount uh, on the bill if the, the trade is settled uh, in renminbi. We, we made a, a, a poll in HSBC in China about uh, this aspect on 50% of the respondents were saying that they would offer a discount if the trade is settled in renminbi. Now, to go back to investment, foreign investors can increasingly invest in China, in renminbi. Uh, there is a full range of products available. How fast is it expanding and how fast are the volumes expanding? Yeah, so the, 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 the products which are offered now in, in Chinese renminbi offshore, the CNH, are quite, uh, 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 let's say, it's, it's, it's available in a lot of banks. For instance, in HSBC private bank, we can offer foreign exchange in CNH. We can offer fiduciaries deposits. We can offer uh, bonds. We call them dim sums. So it's bonds issued in CNH, either by a Chinese uh, issuer or by another, a non-Chinese issuer. Uh, of course, you can access to the H shares, so the, uh, the shares uh, uh, for Chinese uh, companies listed in Hong Kong, we can do structural products, fund of hedge funds in Chinese renminbi. So the list is quite long. Now, what is interesting is to see how the appetite is accelerating for this kind of product. Let me give you an example, just one. Uh, a fiduciary deposit in Chinese renminbi on three months uh, would pay you 1.5% more than the same deposit in USD with the same bank. So of course this pickup is attractive, knowing that uh, the Chinese renminbi is permanently improving uh, against on rising against the USD. So you might have capital gains on the currency and also a higher deposit rate. It's the same for dim sums, you know, these famous uh, uh, bonds I uh, issued in, in Chinese renminbi. We have some uh, developed uh, companies offering a pickup of one to two percent on the same maturity for a bond issued in CNH compared to the bond issued in, on USD. So here also, there is a clear uh, 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 attractiveness in the CNH product. So what we see in HSBC private banking is that we have a lot of investors uh, uh, trying to understand the CNH and willing to, uh, to invest in this currency. It's really an important move in the FX market. What we think is that while the, the, the investors are focusing on Eurozone uh, problems or on the fiscal cliff in the US, they should not forget what is happening in the South. Jean-Christophe, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, it was my pleasure.